Well, over the balance of the year, uh, the U.S., the U.K., and others will be able to make sure that the vaccines are now going to the developing countries. Because many of the vaccines worked, uh, you know, although we're looking at, you know, some of the side effects now and making sure we can treat those and that they're very rare, that good news means that we will be able to supply others. And the other good news is that the actual death rate from this epidemic in the poorest countries has actually been quite low. And so the places where, you know, you want to get everyone over 60 vaccinated, like South Africa, Brazil, uh, you know, that that will become a priority uh, just in the next, you know, three or four months is when the U.S. will move into that uh, excess uh, position and take these act A resources and use them uh, to get those vaccination levels up as, as fast as we possibly can. Typically in global health, it takes a decade between when a vaccine comes into the rich world uh, and when it gets to the, the poor country. So in this emergency, uh, partly because of the second source agreements, all the cooperation, the government money, uh, where the UK, France, and Germany actually pulled Act A together with some other actors like the WHO and our foundation, uh, that's made a difference. Because we didn't practice, you know, it's clear that understanding variants and understanding uh, how quickly you can do the regulatory stuff, you know, when this comes up again, we could be a lot smarter. People didn't invest enough in this risk uh, forming CEPI that the UK and Welcome and our foundation and others did was one of the few things, and it's only a you know a few percent of what should have been done to really practice you know do simulations, understand when that how quickly you could get the diagnostics ready, and so you know um, I I hope we keep in mind that we do need to invest in being ready for the next pandemic.